Hello and welcome back to Against the Storm. In our last episode, we made it through a whole year, give or take. Um, but we also talked about a lot of things, a lot of the way the game works, because I know a lot of you who are watching are new. There are, of course, many who are more familiar, and I appreciate you hanging out with me and and getting through this uh, sort of um, educational period. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to um, playing the game at a more reasonable speed, I suppose, or... Uh, similar more like what i would uh what i normally do at least if, if that's reasonable or not that's up for argument uh and as we as we go it'll it'll it won't be very long um i want to open or i want to get this if we can yeah we've got plenty of stuff let's give them the vegetables we'll get two more people out of this so it's really good to do i'm gonna throw two people at it that way they'll get it done in 30 seconds uh, what they have to do is grab that six those six vegetables from the storage which they probably have already done um and haul them out there, and then they can start. Yeah, there they go now. You can see that here. Then they'll drop them off there, and they will uh, they'll recruit these new two new people. I'd also like to set up a um, a trading post. And while we haven't talked about what trading posts do yet, uh, the sort of short summary is they give us the ability to um, to trade. Well, obviously. Uh, to, to get some dig some other resources that are either not able to be found here in this uh, biome or are a little bit harder to find or make we, maybe we don't have a recipe to make something uh, that kind of thing so we're going to hopefully get some more of those I think I want to swap in uh, let's see maybe one of those humans into the harvester and I'm going to put a lizard in here because the lizards like to work in the kiln because it's warm um, before we go any further actually with this I want to go into the recipes panel and here in the recipes panel, you can see everything that you can make in this town uh, with all the recipes you've unlocked, with all the buildings that you have. And you can uh, do a few different things here. First of all, you can look at and see where all you can make the same recipe. Uh, those two are bad examples. But bricks, for example, we can see here that we can make it at the crude workstation. Uh, six clay becomes two bricks. And we can also make it here at the kiln where four clay becomes two bricks. So that's obviously better. And we can see here that the recipe is disabled in the crude workstation, but enabled here in the kiln. So that's uh, that's a good thing to, to have this. So you can scroll through this menu and see what all you can make right now, and what all uh, how much what options you have of where you can make it and at what uh, quality. There's also a summary up here of how many buildings you have at each of the four different uh, star levels, zero through four, and um, that way you know how many choices you have in each of these uh, recipes. If you want to look at recipes you don't have yet, you can check this box and it'll show you everything you can make in the game. Um, whether that is something that you can actually make now or not, based on the buildings you have unlocked, is I believe um, not revealed. Because uh, I don't know that we have all these buildings yet that are available to us. Uh, the flawless ones, by the way, are a little bit different of a thing, which we'll talk about uh, probably uh, later. Um, but yeah, you can check this box to see everything, and then you can toggle this to see the uh, recipes by ingredient instead. So let's say I wanted to know what all can I make with flour. Well, I know that I can use flour here at the lumber mill uh, to make packs of trade goods, and I can also use flour plus another ingredient here at the cookhouse to make biscuits and so and further and, and on on and on you can go and this shows you all the uh things that you can make right now in the town and if you want to see everything you can of course check that box as well but one final feature one feature that i'd like to use this for is i'd like to set these production limits which we did do like on the bricks uh to limit how much we were making here in the crude workstation but we set that limit here at the specific building recipe level and we also have the ability here to set it globally so that it affects everything that is um so that it affects every recipe by default in every building you can still override an individual uh specific building recipe here and you can see the override here is on so that if you wanted to say, maybe if you had two buildings, let's say we had taken that carpenter uh, in that last uh, blueprint drawing. Maybe in that case, we want to limit the amount of planks the carpenter can produce up to a certain point, And then we allowed the uh, lumber mill to produce more than that. 
And by doing that, we can say that, hey, if, if we start spending a bunch of planks and we get down below that line where that carpenter can make some, then let the carpenter help. But otherwise, let the lumber mill make them a few at a time when we need them up to the maximum limit that the carpenter set at and then or the sorry the lumber mill set at and then you get um uh you get a little bit more efficient but they come out a little bit slower so there's kind of a, a balance or a play that you can do here i don't think we can do this but i'm going to try it anyway to load the recipe limits and yeah we can't okay i thought not so um what we're going to do is kind of go through a few of these recipes and set some recipe limits. Uh, these global limits here. Uh, we're going to set them all to something, and then we're going to make sure that we override them in the buildings that aren't very good. Uh, packs I usually try to do at 10. Pipes also at 10. Planks I'd like to set at 30. Uh, packs of crops, we'll keep all the packs at 10. Although packs of provisions might be a different conversation later. Um, scrolls i'm going to put those at 30 even though this building this recipe we're not going to make 30 of them uh jerky will sit at 30 also but this recipe we may or may not make that many that many uh we could talk about overriding that one and then um skewer uh, food and stuff like that i always make it 30 30 is kind of like my default that way i have a little bit of a buffer and what i'd like to do is save the recipe limits here and I want to, I'm going to do this a lot as we play through these first few towns, as we discover more recipes and set more of these production limits, so that this is committed to um, kind of the save, uh, the whole global save for this for this particular game, and then that way we these these numbers are used as defaults in every town we play from here on. So let's go into the. Um, into the kiln. We're gonna make coal. We'll stop at 30. I may increase this. Bricks though, I'm gonna knock this down to like 20, just to keep it a little bit lower. Same thing with jerky here, but I'd like them to make jerky out of either bugs or meat, but I would like them to use coal as the fuel here because the coal is gonna be more efficient because we're gonna make it here. And so let's let the uh, lizard work. And let's also, we don't have that yet. Uh, we're doing that and we'll move them over there after we're done. We need to set up a couple more camps. We also need to build some more housing. Let's do some more housing first first, and then we can do some more camps uh, after that. We want to do the foragers camp that collects grain, roots, and vegetables. Now, we don't get grain on the ground other than in the fertile soil here. Actually, strike that for a second here. Let's do this uh, farm first. Actually, do it like that. Point the arrow at the fields, because again, they're going to come in from those fields, and then every, so one, every once in a while, they're going to make a trip out to... Um, uh, deliver those to a storage. Let's do this. We have five builders right now, so we need... Okay, we got those two out of there, right. Ah, and we have a trader here. Let's go talk to the trader. Um, every... Uh, after the first... I can't remember how long it, it takes for the trader to arrive. Three minutes or... No, it's more like eight or ten minutes, maybe. Maybe even twelve minutes. Um, but because we've already played through a large amount of time, in this game, the trader arrives right away as soon as we build the trading post. And trading is a little bit of a, a balancing game, um, in a way. I mean, you don't have to balance, but it's kind of a nice idea to. And so what you can do here is you can take an item that is in your goods and you can offer it. And then you can tell the trader what you want that they have for offer. And you can always fall back on Amber, which is, which is cash, basically. But one thing to note, is that the trader sells things for more that uh, at, a, at a higher rate at a higher price than you then they'll buy them from you at so there's always a little bit of a loss to the player for example uh, we have vegetables for sale uh, the trader will pay us 0.18 credit the trader will charge us 0.37 credit now it's not always a two to one ratio uh, or, or thereabouts. Sometimes it's 1.25. It varies depending on the item. And that's just to make sure that uh, the trader always comes out with a profit. And I think, don't quote me on this, but I think the um, the poorer the quality something is, the, the, the higher the trader's profit margin is going to be. So things like raw goods are going to be a lot more expensive are going to be a lot cheaper to sell than they are to buy. Uh, so you're better off in that way, at least, uh, buying uh, higher, higher quality goods. I think made uh, cooked food, which is complex food, or building materials, rather than buying raw food or the materials that building materials are used in, like or used to make, like clay, wood, uh, 
plant fiber, those types of things. So, but on the other hand, because we're getting a bunch of free resin uh, due to the um, due to the forest mystery, we could flip some of this resin, even though it's a very low price. We could sell some of it if we wanted to buy something from the trader, which we might. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that in just a second because I also want to show you this area down here or talk about this area down here. Down here, these are perks that the and sometimes blueprints that the trader offers for sale um, they are basically the same types of things you would get in a cornerstone and they'll appear down here if we buy them uh, the perks will the blueprints will appear like a building blueprint but they work similar to the way cornerstones do in that they give you some benefit some perk by purchasing them so for the cost of 13 amber which we have no amber right now but if we sold enough stuff we could potentially buy some amber or trade for some amber from the uh from the trader uh we could buy a farmer's pack and for with this any farmer can carry five additional items which is kind of nice because remember the farmer is going to be working out of this building once it gets built and they're going to be farming these fields here they're going to plant them during the drizzle they're going to harvest them during the clearance season and then they will have a farm building full of materials and then once that's full they have to cart those items out and back to the storage and so that's a that's a fairly long walk and so the more they can carry per walk the more efficient they are so that's actually a good perk Hello. um here we have gained one insect for every two mushrooms produced well we're not really currently producing mushrooms we don't even get we do get mushrooms on the ground here almost almost told it fib um but we're not currently producing mushrooms anywhere uh, even if we do later but you know free insects for mushroom production is kind of a good deal uh, if you are producing mushrooms and then finally plus two to grain production gain additional grain uh every from every yield so every time they pick grain out of one of the fields if you have the farm that plants grain or every time if you have uh, grain on the ground which we don't that they go through one of the charges on a grain node they will have they will get an additional two grain for each of those harvest actions. So in this case, this one is not any good for us at all. Um, but the rarity here of the green, blue, red does still match up with that rarity scale we were talking about in the end of the last episode, where this is an uncommon perk, this is a rare perk, and this is an epic perk. And it is epic because two additional grain for every harvest is a pretty good deal. So, as we just looked at the resin, we can see that it's worth 14 cents a piece, or uh, 14 amber and 14 cents, 14.14 amber, um, and for the whole stack. Even this one is only is already 13 of that. So we'd have to sell, just for example, all of our resin in order to get even just this one farmer's pack, which is a good perk, but. Is probably not super worth it at this point we could also sell something to get some food as I mentioned um, there's biscuits and pies available for sale here but I think I'm just gonna kind of let this trader ride out and um, go wait for the next one until we can uh, maybe we can we can build up some more inventory and we'll be will, more willing to sell things so let's, I'm gonna right click to dismiss that there's also this alert here that pops out I will usually keep that here because I have a setting in the gameplay auto pause settings that auto pauses when the trader departs just as it paused when the trader arrived and that way I remind myself that hey there's a trader just about to leave if there's any final trades that I want to consider so I leave this popped out because that reminds me oh the reason this game just paused is because that alert or that trader is is here but is leaving uh, I want to move these around just a little bit oh not yet not yet uh, we also have a couple of orders if you if you saw um, at the end of the last episode when we opened this screen up the last time the these countdowns are counting down because they're countdowns and these just uh, passed the threshold where they were made available so let's um, go in here probably about 30 seconds of gameplay ago uh, and we could open up three more glades and they will stack so any glades we open for this one here will also count for this one here um, we can get 30 insects 10 tools and 10 amber or we could sacrifice coal and wood at the hearth which I can't remember if we talked about what sacrificing does but it gives us a bonus to resin production now 
Well, and then also uh, fuel consumption is decreased by 25% and copper bars. Um, the resin production, sometimes these don't trigger in every possible way to gain resin. For example, I doubt they will trigger on this gain of resin. But remember, every tree has a 15%, that was a weirdly spoken, 15% chance for a, a one piece of resin for each charge. So you're getting resin fairly often. And so then that order would give us even more resin when that trigger happens. Instead of getting one piece of resin, you would get two pieces of resin on a 15% chance every for every charge of every tree. But we're getting a crap ton of resin, so that's not as important to me. Plus, uh, sacrificing at this level is probably not necessary and would probably be a waste of materials. Uh, unless we really wanted these things, which maybe we do because 20 copper bars is a decent value as well. Or we could give away, deliver, 8 planks, 6 bricks, and 6 fabric. And you can see there that, uh, well, we don't have any of those things. Um, to get some wildfire essence some clay, and some leather. That's not bad either, uh, especially because clay is kind of limited right now. But, I don't know. It, it, it's a very expensive give to, at this point uh, in this save, especially in this... Uh, um, yeah, in this save, especially in this map, um, because we just started. This is our first map. So giving away the materials that count toward these building materials is quite expensive. But again, like I said, sacrificing that much coal and that much wood is kind of expensive too. We could just open glades. We could. Um, just opening glades means that, well, we get some extra, some extra stuff. I'm a little torn as to which one I should do. I think I'm gonna do this one just because we can sell that resin. And there is a use, by the way. Uh, let's go back into that recipes panel. Toggle to this and search for resin. Um, show all. There is a couple, there are a couple of good uses for resin. The only thing that I wish resin um, would provide to us that it doesn't or would count as is some kind of pack of goods. Because right now we can turn resin into, um, we can turn resin into tea, although we don't have one of those recipes right now. We can turn resin into uh, crystallized dew, and we can turn resin into um, incense. And this one, don't even consider that one, because we're probably not going to find the fine smith. Um, so we could we could use resin to turn into things, but right now there's not a whole lot of direct use for it. And I kind of wish it was useful for a pack, but I think I'm still going to go with. Uh, that sacrificing just because it's kind of interesting and different and we can then talk about sacrificing and then finally here uh, have 40 villagers uh, need for eating jerky fulfilled for uh, 40 times uh, right not 40 villagers just 40 times so humans and lizards all like jerky and for every piece of jerky one of them eats then um they will count towards this, and I think this is even retroactive. So anyone who's already enjoyed jerky at least once will also count. That gives us a bonus to egg production. Hey, we have eggs to pick up off the ground. And some eggs to start with, and some flour. Or we could have 10 villagers with the need for jerky fulfilled within 120 seconds, or for 120 seconds cumulative. That means we would have to produce enough jerky to keep 10 people with that need fulfilled for two minutes. That's a little bit tougher when you only have 12 people that will even eat it, um, but it's possible for sure. Um, but we also have to make sure we have enough meat and, an, and or enough insects in order to fulfill the production of that jerky so that we can make sure that we keep those people happy for long enough. If we do that, we'll get a bonus to jerky production, two more jerky per recipe, plus some uh, bonus meat and some extra people. Finally, if we deliver eight packs of crops, which we can make in the makeshift post, you can tell that by the blue color of the um, of the of the word there, of the name of the building there, and we have ten comfort decorations built in our anywhere in our map. It doesn't have to even be in a town technically. Then uh, we can get three additional humans. We can also get human clan support, which gives us plus three to all human resolve, and we can also get two parts. I think I want to do meat diet just because it's kind of interesting. Um, but I would probably otherwise probably do this one just because it's three people and the additional support 
making the packs of crops isn't going to be too bad to do because uh, we ha do have vegetables and roots and things available that you can make packs of crops out of. But I think I'm going to do this one just because it's kind of different uh, and interesting. Sometimes they don't always play the most optimal way. Um, I will claim that's because I'm trying, diff trying out different things, trying out different combinations. Um, you may accuse me of, and some folks may accuse me of doing it because I don't pay attention. They may not be wrong. But also, I like to see what's going on with things. So we have um, uh, we have one lizard in here. I'd like to have more lizards in there. We also have one free beaver and some free humans. Um, I think I'd like to swap in a human to get another lizard out of something. Uh, let's do that one. And let's put the other lizard in here to get some more of these things made. And let's actually also let the game run should also possibly start doing this. Yeah, let's put a human in there too. There we go. Let's move this over. And let's put another house in right here. And what do we have for people? 15? That'll be perfect then. Uh, 15 housing spots, because three per building. 15 total people. It should be everybody. Everybody should be housed when this is done. We have three unhoused homeless people here. And there will be three that will fit into that. So it looks like it's perfect. Let's also get two humans to work over here as quickly as possible. Uh, the woodcutter's camp is done with the marked trees that I had, the trees I had marked. It'll give you an alert here because I have this setting on um, so that they have no, they will not do anything that I don't have marked. And that's why I like that setting because then I can uh, control where they go and they don't just keep cutting down trees that I may or may not want them to spend their time on. Uh, so I'm gonna just clear some trees over here though and try to get some of that. And let's also build those camps that I keep saying I'm going to make. Roots and vegetables, we have those. Let's make a camp for those. Put you in there. And uh, small herbalist, herbs, berries, and mushrooms. We haven't seen any of those yet, but meat, insects, and eggs. Well, we have some eggs. So let's do some of that as well. What is there? Oh, that's what's there. Let's build one of those and we'll just move those around when they're done. As far as town layouts go, as I mentioned in the last episode, ah, here's the pause for Jorg leaving. Um, and then there goes the alert, like that. Um, so, well, well, I said that I like to have the grid and I like to kind of make everything fit. Well, I, um, I usually try to put my houses on the far side away from the storage because the houses don't need to go to the storage. The production buildings do. So I put the production buildings closer to the storage, put the houses farther away, and I kind of just balance it out like that. It doesn't always work out super well, but it works out fine. I'm also going to step the speed up to 1.5. I usually play at 1.5 just because with narrating and things like that, it takes a little bit. So I want to... Um, uh, I, I want to be able to talk through things and not have to worry about pausing and unpausing all the time. The harvester camp is also alerting me that it's done. There are There's no other plant fiber or reeds in their range. And so I need to move it up here, which we're going to do. Uh, there. And that way they can harvest these uh, plant, this plant fiber instead. These, uh, these flax fields. Right, and you can move down here. No, it's in the way. I'll go there, I think. But I'm going to do rotate. And let's do... Eh. You two, you guys will be all bored in just a moment. And I'm going to put you to work down here instead. Or one of you, at least. You're already bored. Okay. And so are you. Yeah, we'll put both of you to work for a little while down here. And I would like to have a lizard for this trapper's camp to get these eggs because this has a specialization bonus for meat, which is the lizards, just like this one had a specialization bonus for farming, which is the humans. Ah, we have the bricks we needed. Let's put up the um, lumber camp. Lumber mill, that's the one. I think I'm gonna go right here with it. And this beaver will, will carry all the materials, uh, bricks and fabric. 
and then that'll go. Uh, what else haven't we built yet? Uh, these little numbers here show you how many buildings you have built or being built in the case of the lumber mill in your town. The mine is only digs or only digs up copper and coal from the ground. There are no mines in this biome, so you don't have to worry about the mine. The makeshift post we need to actually build, possibly need to build one. I'm gonna build one. We don't necessarily need it, but I'm gonna build it uh, anyway, so I can show you what it is. And then let's move over to, um, well, actually, let's talk about what we want to do next. Where do we want to go? Uh, we could start looking at one of the danger glades. That's probably a good idea because there's more resources, even though there's more risk in those. I won't open one until the next year, till year three, but I think it might be a good idea to work our way that way. I also want to make sure we have enough space here in town kind of opened up. So I think we'll do just a little bit more on the tree cutting, kind of right in here, like this, just to make sure we have enough space for uh, future production, as well as housing. And I actually wanna even take this one down here and dig a little bit more in this area for housing as well. Um, probably about to there, like that. And we'll just kind of clear some trees here in town. And basically I'm just clearing out the circle that the, uh, the town covers because that's the spots where I can build housing and decorations in the town. Uh, let's see. Scrolls, we don't want to make those yet. We'll make them later maybe. And we're not going to make packs of trade goods yet either. We want this uh, this building to focus on making planks and to crank out the planks. That uh, thunder rumble is our storm in 30 seconds warning. So here it comes. Storm year two already. Um, I want to pull one of these humans out of here as soon as they're done with their current harvest action and they have delivered to the, to the building. And we're going to put them back to work up here. And the reason I'm putting the human back to work up here in the storm is because the storm, in the storm, they have another objective. That is to plow the fields. Plowing the fields increases the yield, I think, by like 50%. I don't remember now. Uh, and I don't remember what it tell where it tells you that, but it in does increase the yield of um, maybe here. Ten percent chance of growing extra crops next year. Okay, that's where it is. Increased increased yield, basically. Um, I would like to have another lizard. Can I? Nah. We've got four. Oh, maybe I can. I don't have any available uh, workers for building. We'll leave it. Um, so we're at hostility zero still because we're playing in Pioneer and you, it's hard to raise the hostility in Pioneer. Uh, and we could talk about hostility, the way it, hostility works. It's even harder to raise it in Settler, by the way. But for every year that you've completed in the game, you gain at, at Pioneer 22 hostility per year. That's because the difficulty multiplier of Pioneer is 1.5. So the base amount per year is 15 hostility per year and that's years completed so the next year as soon as the storm ends and the next year starts it'll be another uh another stack of that small glades uh it's, we've opened two of them they are worth eight hostility a piece at this level which means they're worth five i think at um yeah i think it's five yeah it's gotta be five because it's actually seven and a half hostility at this level i kind of wish they would show you the half i kind of wish they would um but it's worth uh Seven and a half hostility, so we're at 15 because we opened two small glades. We haven't opened any dangerous or forbidden glades yet. We will do that soon. And we have 15 villagers, each worth three hostility. The base amount there is two. So that's why we have 45 hostility points. Woodcutters, we have six of them working. They're worth 12 hostility apiece. Uh, base is eight at Settler. That's 72 total hostility. And then we have one hearth which is giving us 30 negative hostility. And we have Queen's Impatience. Remember, I think early on, maybe it was in one of the tutorials, I don't remember, because I was recording some of them somewhat recently. Um, I mentioned that uh, hostility is bad, or sorry, impatience is bad in some cases. And it is, as soon as impatience gets all the way up here, you lose. But up until that point, impatience is actually really good for you because among other things, it can counteract the hostility of the forest and give you a little bit of a negative value there. So having the impatience, the Queen's Impatience, be up doesn't hurt you until it does. Uh, so keep an eye on that. And that's, all these, of course, are multiplied by 1.5. So 
while the, while the negatives, the the hostility increasers are are affecting you, the hostility negators are helping you uh, at that same rate. So let's um let's unpause, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this kind of going over here. We're gonna just take out take out those fruit few trees there. We'll bring these folks over here like this, and maybe you as well, like that. And then they can take out a few of those trees, and we'll get that glade opened in the storm. Now, we can open that glade in the storm if we want, because we aren't at hostility one yet. But I'm going to just wait until the storm is over anyway, because it's kind of a good habit to be in. Uh, you are still doing your thing. Uh, and then this person is, is gathering storm water. And we haven't really gotten into what storm water can be used for yet. But uh, we actually, yeah, we will. Uh, but it can't be used for everything that it it can't be used yet for everything that it will be able to be used for at veteran and higher because it's part of the whole blight rot system oh, there's another egg back there i forgot about that's what's another good thing about this is depending on your rotation you may not be able to see all the nodes exactly and there's the end of the um of the storm and the beginning of the new year so if you come back in here you can see that it shows two years now that is two years completed and they're worth 22 and a half but it's down rounding that one whereas the small glades is rounding up at the half so if there's a little bit it'd be kind of nice if it just showed you the half okay let's go in here uh, leftover crops gain two packs of provisions for every 10 herbs produced i that's a really good one we're producing herbs at the farm uh, we will be producing more in just a moment or starting this year, I mean. Um, but two packs of provisions means that uh, those are things we can sell. Now, we don't have yet the trade routes available. We have to buy Dim Square Level 1 in the Smoldering City Upgrades tree in order to get trade routes working. But you can still sell them to a random trader uh, that comes to the town here. Uh, you, can, you can sell any packs to a random trader. Um, so that's a really good one. Also, metallurgic proficiency. This increases the production speed of copper bars and crystallized dew, as well as all recipes that use metal ingots by 33%. And remember, crystallized dew is a metal ingot. So this one is good, but it's probably not as good as this one. So I'm going to take this leftover crops. And then also we have our newcomer party. We have three people here and five people here. Uh, unless there's a really, really, really compelling reason to take these items over these items, which I don't think there is, I'm going to take the five people more than the three people. With those new beavers, I want to swap in one of them. You must be other oh, here. Okay. And another one of them. And then add one of them here. And we're also going to tell them to go ahead and cut down the rest of these trees and get themselves into that glade. And then we'll move them back over here probably to, to clear some more trees out of the way. Uh, we have a lizard now, I think. Yeah, we have a couple. Let's put them in here, both of them. They can start picking some eggs up. And we just hit Hostility 1, by the way. We are two points into Hostility 1. Which means that in the next storm, this Creeping Shadows will take effect for the first time. Uh, we also have this, uh, oh, we have this ready. Uh, this order, which is the one we took that said we need to have six lizards, because we just got two more. Uh, where we get the large trapper's camp. We can get leather production, which is neither here nor there, I think. And also 30 insects. We're going to go ahead and take that one. I could have also checked the little box there. And we could also get a reputation point. Now, the, the larger camps here, the not small camps, replace... The existing small camps in the building tree the building menu rather as well as on the ground you don't have to do anything to upgrade an existing small camp to a regular camp let's take a look at that building the clothier remember we were talking about coats how people two of our three people or three uh, species like to wear coats we could take this coats recipe as well as a water skins which we probably won't use uh and a scrolls which you already have at one star Alternatively, we could get a three-star flower recipe here and turn those roots and um, uh, into flour and then use the herbs to make biscuits at the cookhouse, which we haven't built yet. That's probably our best bet here because we already looked at the brewery, and while the brewery is good, at this point in the game, I'm not gonna probably not going to take it. So let's take this instead. 
we also need to build that and we need to build put it here because this is pretty close to the front entrance of the storage by the way and i'm also going to build that cookhouse which i think i want to put in right here but i need to move this out of the way first which i'm going to do by moving it up there and let's see which one are you picking you don't say okay then never mind uh let's build that cookhouse too and put that in right here and was there anything else we we got that we have not yet built or planned to build it looks like no uh, we still haven't built a herbalist camp, but we don't need it yet. So I think we're just going to build those few things. We have two builders. Those are two people who aren't assigned any other job. But we also need two houses built. So let's build a couple houses here. Uh, one here and one there. Take this out and come down like that. Let's get that opened up. Chop, chop. There we go our first danger glade now danger glades come with a few things first of all they come with large nodes that we talked about in the end of the last episode that have that are that are the size of four small ones and they have roughly four times the number of charges then but you need the regular size camps to harvest them so this slick shell brood mother because we turned in that order that gave us the large trappers camp we were we are able to harvest this and get leather they do give leather okay there is a source of leather I forgot about. Um, on the other hand, the uh, berries here, uh, the dewberry bush, are gathered via the herbalist camp. But we only have the small herbalist camp, so we cannot harvest these large uh, berry nodes. And you can see that by the fact that the name of herbalist camp here in this tooltip is brown or whatever color that is, tan, rather than the bright blue of the trapper's camp. And that just tells you which recipes you can and cannot make. We also got a large patch of fertile soil here. You can see that in the list, as well as uh, some flax over here. This is a small flax node. Some of the larger Danger and Forbidden Glades do still have small nodes. Some of them have large nodes, and some of them have a mixture. Mostly large or mixture. I don't think they ever have only small. Uh, we talked about the berries and the, and the meat there. They talked about the fertile fields. 15 fields. Uh, that's the most you're going to see in a, in a normal patch. Uh, there are some exceptions in Forbidden Glades, but um, that's the most you're going to see in a, in a patch most of the time. A large abandoned cache, that's similar to the small one we have over here. It's this large one here. It is uh, a 2x2 two two building, whereas this is only a 1x1. One one. Mediums are 1x2. And it requires a lot more resources to break it open and or to send it to the Citadel. Um, but it also gives you a lot more stuff if you break it open and more reputation and amber if you send it to the citadel beyond that we also have a lumber mill here well we already have a lumber mill down here but this is another one this one is a glade event ruin this means that you have a choice of rebuilding it at the cost of a couple of planks and a couple of bricks and you'll get another lumber mill it's stuck here you can't move it but you'll get another lumber mill that you can have or a lumber mill maybe you didn't take a lumber mill like we did um, where you can make really inexpensive planks as well as some scrolls and trade goods. Since we already have one, and I don't really feel like I need another one, I will probably salvage this by providing 10 wood and five of one of these resources to salvage it into 30 wood and 10 packs of trade goods. The last thing here is a large destroyed caravan. That's this here. This is our first Danger Glade event. Danger Glade events have uh, a threat behind them which is here uh, this threat will happen if this timer reaches zero so we have 13 minutes that's in game minutes not uh, while he's talking with the game on pause minutes so that's a little over a year and a quarter uh, so that means probably sometime around mid drizzle next year uh, a little past i guess maybe about maybe about here in drizzle next year we have to have this glade event solved if we don't uh, traders will be afraid and uh, and will not visit the area. Neither trading nor trade routes are available. We don't have trade routes yet, but trade uh, trading is unavailable. Um, and also one impatience point. That means this this line here, this bar jumps up by one. Threats in most glade events are temporary, um, although the impatience point I think is permanent. Uh, the here this threat will go away once this event is cleared once you actually solve the event 
until then th this thing stays however there is an exception and you'll see a symbol here i can't remember exactly where it appears i think it's over over here by the timer but i can't remember exactly you'll see a symbol here um, when I see one in the, in the very first time I see one, I will point it out here in, in this series. But you'll see a symbol that'll tell you that this threat effect is permanent. Even after finishing and clearing the event, the threat would stay if you got to zero on that timer. So to clear this event, we have two possible tasks to do. We can loot it, which is a corruption effect this decision is marked as corruption your choice here can influence certain perks orders etc and that's what by the way all these um all these little symbols can be related to perks orders etc so this corruption effect uh if we do this one while we're working the caravan for the four minutes this is being worked or, or potentially less uh people are afraid of whatever destroyed the caravan so we have a minus six to global resolve and as you can see, it's only active when the corresponding Glade event is being worked on. That means that there that this is this button down here has been pressed after there are people in here and after we've selected this. Up until the, t the countdown is done, this countdown is done. If we do this loot action, we will get rewards of 10 luxury goods, 5 parts, 30 roots, and 25 incense. Pretty good rewards. Or we could send it to the Citadel. If we send it to the Citadel, we would uh, have to have 15 Amber, of which we have none. We would also have to have 8 packs of provisions, uh, for which we have none right now. And if we did that, we would get 0.75 reputation points. I don't feel like I need the reputation points, so I'm going to do this, even though we get the minus 6 to global resolve. The good news is, it's only minus 6, and our lowest resolve right now is the Beavers at 13. That means that they're only going to go down to seven, so we're in a good spot here. Although I might want to pull some people, because I think I might want to put... Uh, no, 11's probably okay for you. You're probably going to get eight of them planted. I could put the human in there, but I'm not going to. Uh, let's Yeah, let's just assign both those humans in here. It's fine. Assign both humans in, uh, holding down shift to assign both at the same time, and investigate. Notice, when you put two people in there, you, it knocks a minute off the timer. And since they don't have to bring anything to this caravan, anything to, to use to open it like we did with that uh, that little camp, um, they're going to come straight here. They're going to start working it right away. And in like 3 minutes and 30 seconds or so, this will be clear. Uh, we can clear this alert or it'll clear itself in just a moment. And then we can let them work. I'm going to take, though, I'm going to pause again. I'm going to take you folks back over here. We're going to clear some more of this uh, forest. I'm going to let you all finish up over here and actually give you just a little bit more to do. Like this. Open this up just a little bit more. Just so we have a bit we can put a path in and kind of get it get it done. Um, we're going to want to farm this. And I may even pull the people out of this farm to have them farm over here if we put two people in there. We'll see how that goes. But we're going to want to farm it. We're also going to want to staff this up with either uh, a beaver, because beavers like engineering, or a human, because humans like farming. Uh, the comfortable means they'll get the plus two, uh, whatever to um, plus one global resolve and or plus five global resolve and the proficiency means they'll have the chance to produce more. We're not going to make scrolls here. We're not going to make packs of building materials here, but we are going to make flour here. And I want to set that production limit, global production limit for flour while we're, while we're talking about it. Uh, let's clear the search here. Uh, we can set the coats to 30. We can set the barrels to 30. Set the pottery to 30. You get the idea. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Uh, who's making leather? Oh, this is still checked. Oops. <laughs> I'm checking things that I don't even mean to check. Uh, save those. That's fine. So, since this Glade event has an adverse effect if we don't finish it, I'm doing it first. And then we'll probably just do this lumber mill and clear that uh, after. Maybe right after, maybe not right after. Depends on what I decide I want to do. Um, for a minute there before we started this glade event the lizards had a blue glow and you may have wondered what that was for and I meant to talk about it and then I got distracted and then I forgot to come back to it the blue glow means that they have passed that reputation threshold reached or passed which is 15 here and that means that uh, at that at that resolve point at 15 resolve Lizards start generating reputation, and that is denoted in the encyclopedia, species, lizard, uh, decadent, 
No, that's that's the other thing. Okay, I always have to remember how these things work. Um, demanding. That's the medium demanding. That's what it is. So they're they're demanding this is medium. This means that they have a medium requirement for how much reputation, uh, how much resolve they need to start generating reputation. Decadence also matters because for every time they generate re uh, a, a, re a full reputation point, that bar will jump up. And the higher the decadence, the farther it jumps each time. Since uh, lizards are a highly decadent race, it's going to jump from like 15 to like 18 or something like that when they gain a point. And that's also why this has moved a little bit beyond just an even whole number, even though we've only done even whole numbers of turn-ins so far, because we gained 0.36 reputation points from the lizards being super happy for just a little while this drizzle season. It's pretty good. I mean, there's six of them, so you're gaining pretty good at a pretty good rate, but also... Uh, that's a pretty good rate. You come over there. Uh, how many did you get planted? Six, maybe seven. You're trying to plant number seven. You may get canceled out with that in just a moment. Yeah, you only got six planted. All right. Well, we planted a bunch of roots, uh, three roots maybe, and then three herbs. I think they try to make it 50-50. But you can turn off, by the way, these recipes if you don't want them to plant a certain thing. So, well, actually, we, we should be able to tell. It takes them 30 seconds to plant. So the most that one person could plant here is eight. Same thing with harvesting. But because of break times and um, possibly travel times to and from the breaks also, um, they only got six planted, which is still pretty good, all things considered. Some more orders came available. We have loyalty. Complete at least one event by making decision loyalty. Now, if we if you take a look at the events we were just working on here, one of them is a loyalty. That's the send to the citadel. But we can also get a loyalty from the caches as well. So we could potentially uh, do that from one of the caches. And by doing that, we would get 20 random goods every time a villager dies. Well, I'm hoping we don't have anybody die. So therefore, that one's gonna be moot. But we do get five parts and three people. Alternatively, we could cut through and discover four more glades to get a huge bonus to pickled goods production, even though we haven't taken one of these recipes yet. Or we could get some amber, and we could get some amber and some crystallized dew, uh, which we can use as metal to do to, to make things out of metal, uh, including like barrels and things. Um, or we can deliver two ancient tablets, which we probably won't see. I think I will do the opening the glade one again. And then this one here, have two events marked empathy completed. We haven't seen one of those yet. Uh, that gives us a uh, plus one production yield for all packs of goods. That's packs of crops, provisions, um, building materials, luxury goods, trade goods. Just five of them, or is there a sixth? That might be it. Um, as well as 15 packs of provisions and eight tools. If I were playing with, if I had the trading trading routes on, I would probably do this one, or at least consider doing this one for the bonus to this. But since we don't have trading routes yet, it's not as good because trading routes require packs of provisions in order to could do them. And we don't have packs, of, we don't have trading routes, therefore we don't need the endless supply of packs of provisions. Uh, over here, we have uh, sell goods worth at least 45 amber to a trader or trade route. And with this, traders will arrive 25% quicker. We will get 12 tools and 3 people. Or we could have 3 tablets for to get these materials here. Some food, some food, and some wine, which is a service good. I think I'm going to go with this one. Chop, chop. I want to see where I want to put this uh, um, herb garden in. That's a good spot right there. That's a real good spot right there. Let's go ahead and put it in. And we can also put down the field building, even though there's nobody to do any building right now. Because that'll help me plan where I want this road to go, which is right in through here. Right there. Which means I want to move this over, maybe over here like this, and finish that road, which is also not going to get built right now. I always forget what the shortcut key for roads is. Isn't there one? path no i have to set it in the settings right 
Okay. Uh, they are unloading this. They finished working the event. So everybody got happier again. The minus six to global resolve is gone. And Sehilda just arrived. So Hilda sells, every trader sells a different variety of products. Um, they have kind of their own focus. Uh, she focuses more on like the stuff the humans like, so farming and things like that. Um, but I don't know what of hers, what of hers I would want at this stage of the game. Uh, we also have um, some three perks down here, all blue. Quick deliveries. All packs of goods are produced 33% faster. That's good if you're if you're one of your strategies is to make a bunch of goods. Um, furniture adds plus one to resolve for villagers with a home. Well, hopefully everyone has a home. Although we do have five homeless people yet, uh, we'll get that taken care of hopefully very soon. And then uh, also that fuel consumption and hearth is decreased by 25%. That we saw on one of the orders. We can we can buy that perk here. Now you may wonder to yourself what happens if I if I took that order and I take this one, they stack. That means the fuel consumption hearts would be reduced by 50% if you took both. So you can take both. Maybe we should sell a bunch of this resin. Not necessarily to buy anything, although we could. But just to get some amber. That way we have some amber on hand for some reason. Uh, maybe, maybe later we'll find a trader that will want to buy some of our stuff. Um, although we could buy something... Um, let's see. We can make the flour now. We could buy some vessels, although we don't have a recipe that will use them yet. But we can't make any of them, so that might not be, uh, might be a, maybe a hard time. Probably not going to buy any food. Yeah, I think let's just do, like, uh, where are we at with this? Um, let's go somewhere in the... 17-ish range. Let's hit auto here. That'll give us 14 of them, which will cost 1750 because they are worth 1.25 to buy, even though they're only worth one to, to sell. Um, let's go up to 15. 15 amber. And what I'm going to do here is hit the auto button to just sell a few more to make that work. And we're off by a penny. As long as we're even or we are offering more, then their value is... Um, uh, then their value is then we uh we can we can execute the trade so let's just do it we're just going to take that 15 uh amber and run with it i considered buying enough to have the furniture but i don't think we need it i need more to have um housing made oh we have these two houses still going right i'm going to increase the priority of these so they get built first as soon as we have builders available and in fact i think i'm going to pull maybe the two humans that are left in the uh woodcutters oh that chime tells us something. Uh, out and and use them to do some building and things. That chime tells us that the hostility level dropped because we had fewer woodcutters, which are which increase hostility. We have fewer of them, therefore hostility dropped, and we happen to drop through a level. We can turn in this meat diet to get some eggs, egg production bonus, and flour, and a reputation point. Going to do that. And then we can do this as well to pick out a smokehouse if we want, or a brickyard, or a bakery. Well, we already have the biscuits at two stars, so that's pie and pottery. That's basically a four stars worth. Pottery would be a good thing to have. Might even be better than the brickyard because, yeah. And then this is worth about four stars as well. Uh, the brickyard is worth about, well, it's worth about five stars to me because the to two star bricks or three star bricks is two stars more than we have but we're also going to get a lot of crystallized dew and copper from things we've already done so I think I'm okay with that incense might, might be good um, jerky would be better than the one we have but I think I'm going to go with the bakery I like the bakery let's do the bakery and that's here. And we can also plan that one out. And I'm going to put it right in there. And uh, Sehilda's so leaving right now. We can take a look here. 12 minutes is what the cycle is. Okay. I guessed right after I thought about it for a moment. Hopefully you all are building these houses. You are. Good. And that'll give us enough housing for everybody we need. Uh, let's have you come up here and chop those trees first. And then we'll move you all down here.
And I also just noticed the time. So we basically, we almost made it through two years in this episode, which is an improvement over the last one. And it's going to be, like I, like I mentioned before, kind of that type of thing where we're accelerating a little bit. Uh, we're moving things around. We're speeding things up a little bit. I just pushed us back into Hostility 1, which I kind of wanted to do because I wanted to talk about that. But I think we will talk about that. No, actually, I lied. We're going to pull that beaver back out. We're still at Hostility 1 anyway. We're going to do this, and we're going to put in uh, roots. I'll leave grain turned on. It's fine. We'll put roots in here so we can make some flour, even though we already have 30 flour and we can't use more. As soon as they finish this, we'll get uh, biscuits going. Uh, we could probably also get skewers going. We could talk about. We'll talk about this in the next episode as well. So we're gonna leave this here, and in the next one we will play through Storm Three, and we will also probably pick out at least one more danger, one more danger glade to get into. Here's one of the forbidden glades. I don't think we're gonna do that, but I'll probably also open up one or two more small glades at least. This one looks like it's a good candidate given its proximity. And I don't know, maybe that one, because of the way the thing is shaped here, it might be good to clear that one out of the way. But we'll see how that uh, kind of goes in the next episode. So thank you all for joining me, and I will see you all then. Bye for now.